Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone and welcome to the class once again. So now we are towards the end of this course and I have just a few more things for you uh, left in the course now before I tell you about kanji. Of course kanji I am not going to do today, I am going to do after a couple of uh, um, lectures. Today we are going to revise what we have done in the 12 weeks through a kaiva that I have prepared. Uh, the kanji section that we are going to do later in our uh, series will be uh, about kanji, what kanji is, why kanji is necessary uh, in the course and so on. So let us first see what we have here uh, for you in the kaiva. So I am going to read the kaiva, listen to the kaiva very carefully and try to see how many phrases you understand. Today we are going to do a lot of phrases here. So first I want you to just listen to the kaiva. This is a kaiva between two people, Mise no Hito and Okyaksan. So from here you can understand that this kaiva is a restaurant kaiva. So what happens at a restaurant when you go there, how you are welcomed, what you say to the waiter or waitress, how the waiter or waitress responds, the person who is attending to you responds, how he gets food and what they say in the end. So well, irashaimase, kochira e dozo, arigato, go chumon onegai shimas, sumimasen, kocha to sandwich onegai shimas, kashko marimashita, kakunin shimas, kocha to sandwich desne, hai, shosho machi kudasai, sugo mochi shimas, jupun ato, omata se shimashita, domo, Dozo go yukkuri o meshi agari kudasai. Deru toki, domo arigato gozaimashita. Mata irashite kudasai. Arigato gozaimasu. Or just arigato. Arigato, domo. So this is in the script. You can see, you can read now. Most of it is in hiragana. There are some katakana characters also over here. So you can read those, practice those. This will help you for your JLPT N5. So now from here you can see that this is a situation where there are lot of expressions and these expressions are used typically in a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, how you are greeted, how to order food, what is said by the waiter or the person attending to you, what the restaurant staff will say to the customer when they leave. So you have done irashai mase a number of times now and we have irashai mase in the beginning. You have also learnt where to use irashai mase when you enter a shop or a department store or uh, um, uh, a market area generally people would say irashai mase and it means welcome. When you go to a market area you will have people standing outside the shop and saying irashai mase, irashai mase and the intonation and the pitch is very high. Meaning basically welcoming you over there and saying please come and try this, please come and try this, please come to my shop. So this is a very, very normal thing in Japan. Anywhere you go people would generally say irashai mase. This is what I have told you. There are certain new uh, places where irashai mase is used and through pictures you can see and visualize um, uh, what the culture is, what the people uh, think, how they behave, how they behave with customers and what they say. So in the kaiva we had irashai mase, kochira e dozo, gochumon onegai shimas, kashiko marimashita, kakunin shimas, omatase shimashita. And dozo go yukkuri. So these were some of the phrases used which we are going to discuss later. 
I would like to tell you that these are some of the phrases used and interestingly they are used all over Japan. Unlike English where we have a number of things to say in a given situation. In Japan only one expression is used for a given situation by all anywhere in Japan. For example, a simple phrase like thank you. The reply in English would be either mention not which is very very Indian or the pleasure is mine or it's all right, it's okay, don't bother. So there are so many things you can say in English or you could also just, just smile or just nod and not reply at all and that would suffice probably for a simple thank you. But in Japan it does not happen like that. In Japan if you say domo arigato gozaimashita there is a set way of replying and the answer would be I am sure by now you already know it is do itashi mashite. So all over in Japan everybody to a proper formal domo arigato gozaimashita they would reply as do itashi mashite. So in Japan these phrases are very very important they play a very important role in communication in communicating with people proper phrases used at the proper time leaves a big impact, shows that you are interested in the language, you are involved with the people. So learning phrases is very very important and these are some of the phrases that you would, you would hear when you go to a um, restaurant. You can see over here for example in a marketplace you have these people selling uh, their goods and anybody passing by they would say irashaimase whether you buy whether you nod whether you do not nod you even give a glance you look at them irrespective of that they would always say irashaimase which means welcome. Another place that you have learned so far is this one where when you enter a shop or a department store or a misse or a hotel people would welcome you by saying irashai mase and the typical way of doing that is by bowing and then welcoming the guest. Now when you come to somebody's house generally this is how this is how people would welcome you and say irashai mase please come in this is a shop probably and this is how you would welcome them inside that please come in and this is how you would bow. Then the new thing over here is and this is also very cultural that when you enter a shop all people in the shop would just say irashai mase. From wherever they are standing wherever they are they would just say irashai mase to the person entering the shop. Now when you also go to the counter to pay the person standing over there would again say irashai mase to you and it feels very good that somebody is welcoming you. So this person because he is here and you have reached this point and are interacting with him that time also he would use irashai mase and in the end when you have paid do marigato gozai mashita. So these are very cultural things and all over Japan by everybody same action is done and the same phrase is used. You also have this lady over here welcoming you to her shop. Whether you go in or not is a different issue but once she is there anybody passing by, anybody coming near the shop generally she would say irashai mase please come in. With a smile, with a welcoming uh, smile which feels very very nice and good. So this is something about irashai mase, this is a new new thing which you will encounter when you go to Japan. This is how it is written, there is a small tsu over here, this is a small tsu on the line which shows that it is a double sound, shai mase. Now we were talking about this restaurant kaiwa. And now once you are at the restaurant, you have entered the restaurant, they have welcomed you and you have gone in. So 
what are you going to do? What is the person who is in the restaurant, the waiter or the person attending to you or the waitress do when she sees you? She will take you to a table to sit. So, what is the expression that she uses when she takes you to the table or guides you to the table? The expression is kochira e dozo. Now, you have done kochira, sochira, achira, dochira if you remember earlier, where dochira is is a question word. So, when someone guides you to a certain place, takes you with them to a certain place, they would say kochira meaning this way please, please follow me, please come after me. Now, this is one place where you can use kochira e dozo, where the, the waiter or the waitress or the person attending to you takes you to your table and there is another place where you can use it. For example, if you go to go to an office or a hotel and ask someone at the reception or maybe to a bureauing which is a hospital and ask for a certain place or ask for a certain person, then the person at the reception could guide you also and could also tell you by pointing that it is over there. So, sochira e dozo or sochira e or when guiding you would say kochira e dozo meaning follow me this way please come after me and the person this person would take you wherever the place you are asking for is or the person you are asking for is. Now, because she is pointing this side it is kochira e dozo. So, these are two, two situations where you can use this kochira e dozo, this way please. Now, you have asked for the menu which is menu onegai shimasu, onegai shimasu, onegai shimasu, onegai is a request. So, you ask for the menu, the menu is given to you and then the waiter comes over here and what does he have to say? He wants to take his order. So, what is he going to say? Go chumon onegai shimasu. Go over here is honorific. As I told you earlier, o is honorific, go is honorific, o is used with certain words, and go is used with certain words. One word I told you earlier was go jusho, meaning your address, and you never use these honorifics o and go with your name or people of your family, your family members. Go is always meant for people outside your family. So, go chumon, chumon is order, what are you going to order? So, he says please give me your order. Over here also it is the same thing, they have come to their table, the waiter comes and he says go chumon onegai Shimas, please give me your order. Then once the order is taken by the waiter or the person attending to you, what do you think should he do now? So, there is a phrase kashiko marimashita. Generally, the waiter would say kashi komarimashita. Komarimas means to be afraid, to be scared, but here this is one kashiko marimashita means in one way it means I have understood and the actual meaning of this phrase is certainly I will do as you are saying. Kashkomari mashta. Now, this gentleman has told his chumon, has told him what he wants and the waiter has also written and he says Kashkomari mashta. I will certainly do what you are saying, what you have ordered I will certainly get it for you. So, it is kashi komari mashta. So, kash komari mashta is what the waiter is going to say always. And then what does he do? He has to repeat the order and confirm whether what he has written is correct or not. So, he says kakunin shimas. So, once the order is given then the waiter says kash komari mashta. I have understood I will certainly do what you are saying and then kakunin shimas. I will read it out to you once and check 
whether what you have ordered is what I have written. Now, these are phrases which are used all the time at the restaurants by the people attending to you over there. Now, he has taken the order, he has confirmed the order and now he has gone and after 10 minutes he comes back, the waiter comes back and he gets whatever was ordered, whatever the person wanted. So, then what does he say? He has kept this person waiting for some time while he was getting the order. So, as the Japanese are very polite people, so well he says, Omata se shimashita. I am sorry to have kept you waiting for so long for your order. So, this is a phrase used all the time. Omata se shimashita. O is again honorific and mata se shimashita is matsu, is the verb matsu. It is coming from there. Matsu, which means to wait. So, sorry to have kept you waiting is what this phrase means. I apologize for taking so long. Omata se shimashita. And the intonation is always rising, you see, with all these phrases over here at the restaurant, it is generally very high. Please remember that the person will just get this, put it in front of you, put all that he has got over here and say, Omata se shimashita. Now, you are here at the restaurant, you have everything, your wine is there, your plate is full, whatever you have ordered and the waiter is now going to leave you to eat. So, again he is very polite, he is very courteous and he will bow and what will he say? Dozo go yukkuri. Dozo is please go ahead, you may please start your meal and again go yukkuri. See, again you have this go. Yukkuri means slowly, leisurely enjoy your dinner and go again because they are okyaksan, they are customers, he is serving them. So, go again is honorific over here and is used. So, you have another word gojusho, just now you did gochumon and now this new word goyukkuri with this honorific go. Yukkuri means gradually, slowly, leisurely. So, dozo go yukkuri and also one more phrase he uses which completes the phrase actually. Dozo go yukkuri meshi agatte kodasai, meshi agaru, meshi agaru, meshi agaru is a verb which is polite for taberu to eat. So, polite for taberu is Meshiagaru and over here he uses the kudasai form which is the please or the request form with te meshiagatte kudasai. So, te kudasai form is used over here, te kudasai, verb plus te kudasai form is used, dozo go yukkuri meshiagatte kudasai. Please have it, enjoy your food, have your food, leisurely enjoy your dinner. So, those go yukkuri meshi agatte kudasai. So, these are the phrases that are used which you will generally hear when you go to a restaurant in Japan. Also, there is something very important that is done once you have finished eating and you are about to leave now. So, what would they Say, Domo arigato gozaimashita. Mata irashite kudasai. This phrase is generally used by the people of the mise, by the people of the restaurant. When you are leaving, generally in a Japanese restaurant, they will all come out and bow and say, Domo arigato gozaimashita. Mata irashite kudasai. And generally, you, you could smile. You could say arigato, you could say arigato gozaimashita. Any of the phrases you could use. 
but the staff would generally say mata irashite kudasai. Please come again. So, this was a kaiva telling you about what you will hear at a restaurant and how to respond or how to ask for something or call the waiter or waitress. Now, we have another kaiva for you. Listen to this kaiva and see if you can catch a new phrase there. There is another phrase which is used, which we have done, but how to use it you can see over here. This kaiva is also of mise, which is a shop. This is a shoe store and mise no hito and okyaksan are talking. So, when you enter the shop again, the first phrase that you hear is irashaimase. So, I am going to read this now. Irashaimase, sumimasen. Nagagutsu arimasu ka? Chotto matte kudasai. Shirabete mimasu. 2 3 pun ato. After 2 or 3 minutes. Okyaku-san, kore wa ikaga desu ka? Ii kedo chotto chisai desu. Mou chotto oki no wa arimasen ka? Moshiwake arimasen. Ima kore shika arimasen. So you have these two people talking. And again, as you can see, irashai mase is there. Then you have chotto matte kudasai. Please wait for a minute. And of course, he could go and just not say anything, or he could also say shirabe te mimas. Te verb in te form plus mi mas, meaning I will go and check, or I will go and see. If I have nagagutsu, which is long boots or not, naga is from nagai and gutsu is kutsu. After 2 3 minutes, when he comes back, no ato. After 2 3 minutes. So, mise no hito, okiyakusan, kore wa ikaga desu ka? Now, ikaga you have done in a different situation where you would ask. Kocha wa ikaga desu ka? Kocha wa ikaga desu ka? Or kocha wa do desu ka? Do desu ka? Both are same, only do is informal and this is formal and polite. So, over here now, because he is talking to Okyak-san, he is someone working here in the mise. The most polite way to ask is, Okyak-san, kore wa how about this one? Ikaga desu ka? Kore wa ikaga desu ka? Ii kedo, chotto chisai desu. Okyak-san says, it's alright, but. So, kedo is a particle, an informal particle, which means but. It is similar to demo. But usage is different, used at different places. Both are joining words, that is conjunctions that you have done. E kedo. It is all right, but chotto chisai desu. It is a little, chotto means little. Little chisai desu. It is a little small. Mo chotto oki no wa arimasen ka? Mo is M O U and not mo as in mo as in also. No, it is not this over here. It is mo chotto, a little more, meaning more. Mo chotto oki, a little more oki no wa. No over here is for kutsu. No wa. Arimasen ka, polite. She is asking, do not you have something a little bigger than the one you have shown me? Mo chotto oki kutsu wa arimasen ka. Instead of kutsu, you will use no. Moshiwake arimasen. This is a new phrase. Moshiwake arimasen. I am extremely sorry. Instead of sumi 
masen. So, polite for sumimasen you could say or a very, very formal situation. Moshiwake arimasen, ima koreshika arimasen. Now, there is a new thing over here, shika, shika arimasen. There is this new word shika and then verb arimasen. So, I am quite sure you would have understood the kaiva. Now, we have to do shika over here, which is new for you, something new in grammar. It is good to know shika because you can use it in various ways. You can convey a lot of things by just using shika. Ima kore shika arimasen. So, let us do shika over here. So, we have this in the script as always. You can go over it, it is going to help you in your JLPT N5 reading. Now, we have some renshu for you and this renshu is verb in te form plus mi mas as we had in the kaiba. Now, what is it? We have this picture here, this gentleman is on the phone going to talk to somebody. So, den wa shite mi mas. Now, what is the situation? For example, you have a uh, yaksoku, you have to go for a film, you are at the theater waiting for your friend, the friend has not come and your other friends tell you, have you talked to him? Did you tell him properly? Is he coming or not? Any of these? So, he says, okay, then washte mimas. I will just call him and see or call him and talk to him and see what he has, what he is planning. So, denva shite mimas. I will just talk and see. I will do the denva and see. That is the literal translation. You have this gentleman Tanaka san reading a paper. So, what is the situation? Let us see. Shimbu no yonde mimas. Now, what could the situation be? Tell me please. It could be kanji. Kanji wa daijobu desu ka? Kanji yomemasu ka? Mm, shimbu no yonde mimasu. I will see whether I can read or not. Then there is another situation. This gentleman is washing, looking a little flustered, unable to do. So, the situation could be very easily that he does not know how to use the washing machine and has put lot of soap detergent in the washing machine and it is coming out. So, yatte mimas. Now, what do you think could be the situation? He does not know as I just told you probably and his friend says yatte mite kudasai kantan desu yo. Muzukashiku wa arimasen. Dozo ikkai yatte mite kudasai. And then he says, okay, ja yatte mimasu. And then he is trying to wash clothes. That could be one situation. He does not know he is messed up. Moichido yatte mimasu. I will try it once again. If I have messed once, does not matter. I will try and do it once again. Then he is making Japanese food as you can see from the cups and things kept over here. They are very Japanese and this is nabe ryori on the table. So, well, let us see. Nihon ryori dekimasu ka? Jozu janai kedo yatte mimasu or tsukutte mimasu. So, he is trying tsukutte mimasu. I will make and see. I am not very good, but I will make and see. Gohan o tsukutte mimasu. Nabe ryori dekimasu ka? Nihon ryori dekimasu ka? Dekinai kedo ichido tsukutte mimasu. So, you can practice verb in te form plus mimasu like this. Take up a photograph, think of a situation and try to use te mimasu form. Now, there was something else in the kaiwa as well. There was shika, this particle shika. Let us see what it is. Shika is a particle 
and means except or only in English. It is similar to that in English. One very important thing with shika is that it is always to be used with a negative verb. It tells about what the speaker is thinking, what the speaker thinks, how the speaker feels and what is the reaction of the speaker regarding a certain comment or a situation. So, you can see from the sentences here, examples here, tsukue no ue ni hon shika arimasen. What does it mean? Now, over here, shika is very strong. Tsukue no ue ni hon ga arimas is a normal hon ga arimas. It is present. Tsukue no ue ni hon shika arimasen. Only hon is present. Only hon is present. Or you could say there is nothing but hon on the table. Except hon, there is nothing on the table. Only hon is there on the table. What is present on the table? Except for hon, nothing else is present on the table. So, your feeling is very strong. Your feeling comes out very strongly with shika. Another example you have, heya no naka ni sensei shika imasen. Heya no naka ni dare ga imasu ka? Sensei ga imasu. A simple statement, sensei ga imasu. There is sensei. Heya no naka ni sensei shika imasen. There is only sensei in the class. There is no one except sensei in the class. One person who is present in class is sensei. Nobody but sensei is in class. So, when you use shika, then you feel strongly about that situation. For example, there is another one, eki made jugohun kakarimasu. Simple statement. We remove the shika from here and then we say eki made jugohun kakarimasu. Full statement, it takes 15 minutes to the station. Eki made jugohun shika kakarimasen. It only takes about 15 minutes, so it is not that far. It only takes about approximately 15 minutes to the station. So, this is how you will use shika in your uh, conversation, and please remember. Shika will always come with a negative verb. You can see over here. And another very important thing for you to remember because a lot of you would want to appear for JLPT N5. So, Shika will be used with kakarimas. This verb kakarimas will take Shika and not dake which is another particle used in a similar manner in the language, which I am just going to do with you. So, please remember, shika will go with kakarimasu. Jugohun shika kakarimasen. It takes only 15 minutes to the station. Though it is used in the negative, you will remember the meaning is very different. There is nothing as shika arimas or shika imas or shika kakarimas. It is always in the negative, please remember. Now, I just told you about dake and about shika. Both are, both are particles, both mean only. Shika also means only and dake also means only. Now, there is a big difference over here. Shika is used with a negative verb only. You cannot use it with a positive verb as in mas form. Shika ikimas, shika arimas, shika kakarimas, shika nomimas, shika yomimas. Whereas dake can be used with negative as well as with a positive verb. There is another difference over here which is also very important. That is that shika comes out very strong. Shika also tells you about the feeling of the speaker, how the speaker feels in that situation, how the speaker responds in that situation, how the speaker reacts to a given situation. 
when he uses shika. Whereas, with dake, it is a simple statement. The speaker has no opinion, he is just stating a fact over there, he is trying to tell something in a very, very normal way. There is no feeling attached to dake. So, please remember that shika is stronger than dake and dake does not show any feeling, it is a statement whereas shika definitely shows how strongly the speaker feels about the situation. For example, kogi ni gakusei dake kimashita or kogi ni gakusei shika kimasen deshita. So, you can have kogi ni gakusei dake kimashita or kogi ni gakusei shika kimasen deshita. So, what is the difference between shika over here and dake? See, kogi ni gakusei shika kimasen deshita, there were only students and no one else. Whereas, over here with dake it is only students came, whereas with shika it is no one but students came. So, there is a slight difference over here in the feeling. You can note that, you can see this person singing. So, using shika what are we going to say? Kurasu no naka de mariko san shika otai masen. That she is the only one who can sing, nobody else. Nobody else but mariko san can sing. And there is a table here with a book on top. What is the sentence? Tsukue no ue ni hon shika arimasen. That is, there is nothing else but a book on the table. Well, you have this classroom where you have this sensei teaching with the students. So, heya ni kenkyu sei to sensei shika imasen only these people are there. So, you will notice that shika imasen and shika arimasen always in the negative. Please remember that with shika. So, we have done a lot of things here today. We have done shika, dake, moshiwake arimasen, a lot of expressions here. Please try to go over those expressions, learn them and then we will meet again in our next class very soon with lot of more revision to do. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimasu. Mata aimashou.